Today, we see the Holy Spirit of God coming upon the disciples of the Lord under the form of tongues of fire. And we see the disciples, better said, we hear the disciples preaching, speaking in all the languages, in all the tongues of the people who are gathered together in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Filled with the Holy Spirit of God, the disciples of the Lord were speaking in the languages of the people, of all the nations gathered in, in Jerusalem, and the people would understand. Because when people are filled with the Holy Spirit of God who is love, people transpose themselves in each other. Because of this miracle, because of this transposing of the disciples into the people, and because of the preaching of St. Peter on that day of Pentecost in Jerusalem, the Acts of the Apostles tell us that more than 3,000 people were added to the church that day. The church grew and in bounds and leaps when the Christians were Christians, when Christians knew to forget about themselves and to transpose themselves into the people around them. This is, this was the vision of the church from the beginning. This is why from the beginning, when St. Paul wrote the first book of the New Testament, his first letter to Thessalonians, even if he was speaking Aramaic, because he was a Jew, and his first language was Aramaic, but he also was speaking Kini Greek, the language spoken by as a first language or, or as a second language by a lot of people 2,000 years ago in the Mediterranean Basin, it was, if you want, like English nowadays. This is why St. Paul did not write his first letter to Thessalonians, the first book of the New Testament, in Aramaic, because Aramaic would be understood just by the Jews. He wrote in Kini Greek, not the classical Greek of the philosophers, which was not understood by the people anymore, but in Kini, popular Greek understood by everybody. Because he wanted his message to get to as many people as possible. When Matthew, Mark, Luke and John wrote their Gospels, they followed the example of St. Paul. Even if you are speaking Aramaic as, as the first language, they wrote their Gospels in Kini Greek, so that the good news of the coming of the Messiah into the world will get to as many people as possible. Because they knew that salvation came for everybody. The rest of the, of the New Testament was written in this popular Greek, the international language of the time, so that people will get the good news of the coming of the Messiah. When the church had this spirit, the church grew in bounds and leaves. This is why also the Holy Liturgy was originally composed in Kini Greek because even in Rome, the Romans would speak Latin, but in the time of the Lord, they would also speak Kini Greek. And you have people of different ethnicities, like on the day of Pentecost, coming together to worship God, to worship the Lord on Sunday, and because Kini Greek was the first or the second language for all of them. They would worship God in a language understood by everybody. Later on, when the Romans, in about 300-400 AD, the Romans stopped speaking Kini Greek. And very lovingly, Saint Jerome decided to translate the Bible into Latin. But he did not translate the Bible into classical Latin. 
He translated the Bible into popular Latin, the Latin spoken by the people. Until today, this first translation of the Bible in Latin is nicknamed uh, the Vulgate, the Vulgar. <laughs> it was not Vulgar. In Latin, Vulgar means popular. It does, doesn't have the meaning of uh, in English. It was the popular Latin, the Vulgate, spoken by the people because Saint Jerome wanted to give the Bible, which was not understood by Latin in Greek anymore, in Kini Greek, to give the Bible to the people in their language. Guess what happened in time? Kini Greek became like the language of the Bible and we have to keep it like that. Even the Greeks in Greece nowadays, from what I understand, understand a few words here and there, not more than 50% of the Kini Greek, because it's not spoken by them anymore. That was the language understood by the Greeks 2,000 years ago, not today. Same thing happened with Latin. The Latin used by Saint Jerome to translate the Bible into the language understood by the people in a few hundred years was not understood by the people. But the Western Christianity insisted on Latin, which became a holy language. A holy language. It was not supposed to be a holy language. It was supposed to be a language understood by the people. When the Slavs, when Rotislav, the Prince of Moravia, asked for the missionaries for Christian missionaries would be able to preach the gospel in the language of his people in Slavonic. Very, the very wise patriarch of Constantinople at the time in the 800s, St. Photius, knew that two of his disciples, Cyril Methodius, knew Slavonic. They knew Slavonic because Cyril Methodius grew up in Thessalonica, very close to the Bulgars, just north of the of the Byzantine Empire, and they picked up Slavonic from the, from the Slavs of Thessalonica because they would, they would play together on the streets of Thessalonica. So Cyril Methodius knew Slavonic, which they learned as children from the Slavs of Thessalonica. St. Photius knew this, and when Rotislav asked for Christian missionaries who would be able to preach in Slavonic, Photius said, I have two of those. Cyril Methodius knows Slavonic. He called them, would you like to become missionaries to the Slavs? Yes, of course. <laughs> but the Slavs didn't have an alphabet. Very lovingly, very sacrificially, like the disciples, like the disciples on the day of Pentecost, Cyril Methodius translated, not only they translated, first of all, they designed an alphabet from the Greek alphabet, which they knew, they designed the Cyrillic alphabet, or the Slavonic alphabet, and they gave an alphabet to the Slavs. More than that, they translated the Bible and the service books into Slavonic, and they went to Moravia to preach the gospel in the language of the Slavs. The Slavs loved them. But the Latin missionaries who were also in Moravia didn't like Silver Methodius, and they made their life miserable. And they summoned them to Rome, the church was still one, they summoned them to Rome and they complained to the Pope of Rome that these missionaries, these Greek missionaries are using Slavonic and they should not use Slavonic because that's not a holy language. And when they presented, you know, the Latin missionaries and the and Syrian Methodius went before the Pope, uh, the Latin missionaries claimed that there are three holy languages in which the gospel should be preached. Greek, Latin and Hebrew. And this comes from the Bible. What is it in the Bible that Greek, Latin, and Hebrew are holy languages? Who decided that? Pontius Pilate. Because he wrote the sentence of the Lord in Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. Okay? So according to the Latin missionaries, it was Pontius Pilate who made Greek, Latin, and Hebrew holy languages. Cyril Methodius said, no, that was the guy who sentenced the Lord to death. He was not inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. 
When the Holy Spirit of God came upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost, the disciples spoke in all languages. So we should preach the gospel in any language. The Pope said, Cyril Methodius are right. Go back to Moravia and speak, preach the gospel in the language of the people. They went back to Moravia. The Latin missionaries still made their life miserable. In fact, one of them died in Rome of a natural death. The other one went back to Moravia. Uh, he was imprisoned. But they had disciples in Moravia. And even if their mission was not very successful in Moravia, and their disciples had to flee, they fled and they went to Bulgaria. Now, the Slavs of the south, just north of Greece in Bulgaria, the Greeks have been trying to Christianize them for about a hundred years using Greek. You're not making any progress. When the disciples of Cyril Methodius came from Moravia to Bulgaria with the service books and the Bible in Slavonic and they started to preach and to serve in Slavonic, the Bulgarians were Christianized almost overnight. In less than a hundred years, they had their own patriarchate, and they became Orthodox Christians. But what happened in time, the Slavs themselves transformed Slavonic into a holy language. Until today, the Bulgarians, the Serbs, the, the Russians, you know, the Slavs, serve the Holy Liturgy and read from the Bible in Old Church Slavonic, which was nothing else than the dialect learned by Cyril Methodius in Thessalonica as children. And that became the holy language of Church Slavonic. From what I understand, even the Arab Christians are serving the Holy Liturgy in an Arabic that is old and not really understood by people nowadays. This is something that we have to be aware of and to work on in the Orthodox Church. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit of God came upon the disciples, the disciples forgot about themselves and they preached in the language of all nations. This is something that, as I said, at large in the Orthodox Church, we have to work on if we want our church to grow. If we want the Orthodox Church to be understood by the people. Our services are heavenly, are otherworldly anyways. If people don't understand at least the language, it's very hard to make the connection with God. That's at the Orthodox Church level, global level. At our church level, Today, on the day of Pentecost, I'm here to speak the truth in love to you. The Holy Spirit of God is the Spirit of Truth. I'm going to speak the truth to you now about our church community. Ever since I came to Fort Wayne to serve this church, I had a few people who speak Greek as a first language coming to me and telling me, Father, we should do more of the service in Greek. I had a few people who speak English as a first language come to me and tell me, Father, we should do more of the service in English. I had no person who is who speaks English and came to me and told me, Father, we should do more Greek for the Greeks. We should do more Greek for those Yayas who hardly understand any English. And even if, even if that Yaya doesn't understand Kini Greek, she likes to hear the song. And I didn't have any people of Greek descent who came to me and told me, Father, we should do more English for the people who don't know Greek. It's not about the language. It's about love. Speaking each other's language is only one aspect of becoming loving. 
of becoming filled with the grace of God. I also want to share with you that ever since I came to North America, not only to Fort Wayne, the first church that I was called to serve in North America in Canada was an English-speaking parish. I was Romanian in Romania. I was assigned to serve this English-speaking parish. I said, Lord, help me. I didn't try to improve my English. I went and I started serving in English, knowing that I am here to be like Christ, who said, I, I came not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. I left behind everything that I liked. I grew up in the church. When I left Romania, I knew the services by heart. Because God gave me a good memory and because I, 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 I listened to the services a lot. And I knew that by heart in Romania, I had to forget everything and to learn the services in English. I had to write my sermons and to read them on Sundays. After preaching freely in Romania, after about a year, we had a great land retreat, and the speaker, the guest speaker, was a great speaker, and he spoke, of course, in English. I prayed and I said, Lord, help me to speak like him one day. And that day was the next Sunday. I said, Lord, you speak through me. I don't want to read sermons anymore. I want you to speak to me. And he gave me the words. When we want to forget about ourselves and to serve God and the people, he works miracles. But we need to humble ourselves and to forget about ourselves. That's what the disciples did. Because that's what Christ did. And that's what we are called to do as Christians. If we want the church to grow, if we want to experience the Pentecost and the growth that happened on the day of Pentecost, we need to forget about ourselves. Amen. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.